Hello and welcome to Automation Direct Media Series. We're going to walk through editing your INI file in any of your DirectSoft versions of uh, programming software. So as you can see right now, I'm actually in the DS launch screen, which we suggest you go to anytime you launch DirectSoft. And I'm actually in DirectSoft 5, which is a newer release. And over on the left hand side in the toolbar here, we have an icon for the DS500.ini. Now if you have an older version, it's going to be whatever that version is. So if you have version 3.0, it's going to be a DS300.ini. If you do not have the actual icon over here, you can go find it, and let me show you how you can do that. You can do it a couple different ways. You can go to uh, your Windows Explorer and do a search for that DS300.ini uh, or 400.ini. Um, but 4 and 5 should have the icons. Um, it could even be DS200.ini. But what I actually did is just went straight to uh, C colon and then Windows. And if you look down here, I actually have DirectSoft 400 INI and 500 INI because I have DirectSoft 4 and 5 both installed on my computer. So you can do it that way or you can do a search, either one. Okay, now I do have DirectSoft 5, so I have the nice logo here. I can go directly to it. Now, what is the INI for? Why would you need it or why would you want to go in and edit anything with it? Okay, first thing, let me close that out and we're going to launch the screen and notice when I launch it's actually going to start searching for all our communications links. So you notice right here we're searching all of our com links. Okay, and it comes back and says, okay, you've got a few com links that are uh, disabled and you've got one that is enabled. Well, let's just say for instance you got 40 or 50 machines on here and you don't want to have to let it sit there and go through every of those com links trying to see if they're enabled or not. That's, you know, taking up your time, it's bugging you, it's a hassle. Okay, so we're going to go into the INI file. So I already have it open. We're going to go down here and we're going to scroll down this INI file. And as you can see here, it says auto sense equals zero. Well, zero means it should not go out and auto sense those com links but default they put a little semicolon which disables it so we're going to delete that hit file save we're going to close it and we're actually going to close our launch screen now watch what happens this time when we launch it pops right up doesn't go out and sense anything now the downside of that is this is not going to tell you which links are uh, enabled and which ones are disabled but it will save you time if you have a lot now personally I would just leave it alone unless you have a lot of links and that's really becoming annoying. The second thing you can go in is let's say that I need to create a link and COM1 and COM2 on my computer are already tied up with some other devices. I need to use, let's just say I have multiple COM ports, serial COM ports, so I need to use COM port 4. That's what I want to program my PLC with. Well, you notice we're only getting 1 and 2 on here. Well, what do I do if I need 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, or even 8? Because you can enable up to COM8 with the INI file in DirectSoft. So let's cancel that. Let's go back to our INI. Let's close this one out. And we're going to scroll down. And as we get down towards bottom or the middle here. You'll see it says divasync.dll and it talks about all of your COM devices or it shows all your COM devices and says COM 1 and 2 enabled equals 1. Well 3, 4, all the way up to 8 all equals 0. So like I mentioned we want to enable COM 4. So all we've got to do is put a 1 in there, hit file, save, we're going to close it, We'll close our launch screen and we'll relaunch. And guess what? We can go to com links, add a link. One, two, and four are all enabled now. You can disable them if you have a full list here, enable them as you need. Same thing with the modems and the Ethernet and so forth. Okay, that's what it's for. Now let's back up just a hair and we'll show you a couple of things. There are some uh, application notes out on the website. You can also contact Techno Support if you need some further help. So we'll go to our home website at automationdirect.com, go to Tech Support, and when you bring up that page, as you can notice, we're going to scroll down here, but we have technical and application notes. 
and you can scroll down to software products, Drexoft 32, and we actually have PDFs here that will walk you through editing your INI files, going through communications and stuff like that. Let's back up and let's say, okay, um, still not helping me out, I have some problems, what can I do, how do I get a hold of you guys? Well, you can go to contact technical support, and you can see here we have our free 770-844-4200. It's a free phone call to our technical support. Also, you have a fax number. You can fax them in a request or a question, or simply just fill out the email here, and you can ask them if you feel like you may you know, want to go out on a forum and post a topic or ask some questions. You can go there as well. So I hope this helps you out with your DirectSoft INI, and uh, you better understand it a little bit better. So thanks. Have a great day.